All right. Good evening, everyone, and happy Tuesday. It is September 18, 2012. Hope you are having a lovely day. We sure have a wonderful show in store for you tonight with our returning friend, uh, an author, speaker, husband, father, camper, and universal traveler, George Cavasilas. Um, he has written a new book that is due out uh, in print this week weekend called Our Universal Journey. Of course, uh, the ebook edition is available at his website, ouruniversaljourney.com.au. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining us here tonight, souljourneysradio.com. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to give us a call tonight, 218 218- 402, uh-oh, wait, am I reading the, <laughs> I'm sorry, so many numbers, I get confused, it's 218-339-8525, that's 218-339-8525, and if you'd like to join us for the chat tonight, that's over at souljourneysradio.com, and you know, I've been blessed to meet George in person and uh, visit one of his speaking engagements um, in Chicago, which was just a really beautiful experience. I feel so blessed to have you back here, George. How you doing? Uh, well, this morning for you. <laughs> yeah, good morning, Christy, and good evening, good night, everybody else. It's, uh, <laughs> it's great to be back on, and, and Cynthia and I were incredibly privileged and honored to have met you as well. Thank you for that. Ah, oh, thank you. I um, gosh, I, I was just having a little issue right before the show um, that I let you know about on your site, but now I click on it and it seems to be working. Uh, so I just wanted to put up uh, both of the sites just in case anybody else is having problems. Um, but the new one you're moving to is the one I mentioned, right? The hour. OurUniversalJourney.com.au. Yeah, that's right. the website. That's the uh, website for the book. It's kind of like a, it's, it's a dedicated website just for the book. And but we have our so our main website, which is OurJourneyHome.com.au, and um, we're moving away from the old URL, which was Our-Journey-Home.com. So okay. um, the new one is, uh, again, ourjourneyhome.com.au. A little splash of gold on the end there, Chrissy, and um, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a good feeling to have it flowing rather than have the dashes and have it a bit fragmented and, and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm putting them all there just in case. And uh, you not only have a new book out, um, you have a new radio show. Yeah, we do. Jason and I were sitting back one day and said, you know, why not? <laughs> and uh, we kind of laughed about it and went like, nah, we, we couldn't do something like that. We, we, we haven't got what it takes for something like that, do we? And I was <laughs> like, you know, we thought about it and uh, discussed it, had a bit of a laugh about it. And then we thought, why not? Let, let's give it a go. And we looked into creating the um, uh, infrastructure for it. And as you know, Christy, it's not... So simple in the beginning um, to get things set up, and it's a take, does take a lot of work, a lot more than people realise. And uh, so we went about making it happen, and it's manifested and come to fruition. And we're having a lot of fun with it. We're having we're, we're broadcasting our podcasts whenever it feels right to. We haven't got like a set weekly routine or fortnightly routine or what have you. It's uh, it's whenever it happens, and it's it's a good feeling to do it that way. It works well for us. And it works for, well for the guests. Ah, definitely. Okay, so do you have like a newsletter um, that you can send out? Uh, so just in case you decide to do a show 10 minutes from now, um, <laughs> somewhere where we can sign up and be prepared to listen to you live? Uh, yeah, sure. On, on SuperWoo Radio, you can go to the website, which is www.superwoo.com. Radio, which is um, Wu spelt with W double O, so it's super S U P E R W double O radio um, dot com dot au, and there's a newsletter you can subscribe to there, and we send them out every time we're about to, um, you know, post a podcast. All right, excellent. I see you have a Facebook page too, so you can just go to Facebook and uh, mm. type, I guess, Super Wu Radio in the search, and it should come up. 
Yeah, that's right. All right. <laughs> well, George, where'd you come up with the name Super Woo? Yeah, good question. We, um, you know, a lot of people were saying to Jason and I, you guys are weird. You talk all that weird woo woo stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and Jason and I were going, you know, we, we don't just talk your normal woo. You know, we're not talking about just ghosts and angels and things like that, you know, <laughs> and, um, just your basic stuff. We, 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 we talk super woo. So, um, <laughs> That's where the name originated from. <laughs> ah, that's great. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, and so, once again, you're not really on a regular schedule, per se, for the radio show yet, just kind of going with the flow and whenever it feels right, huh? Yeah, that's, that's what we decided to do because um, it just feels like more appropriate for us to do it that way. It, it's flowing, flowing in that river of life. And yeah. That way we're walking the talk and it just feels right. That's <laughs> the only way to put it, really. I hear that. It does kind of, uh, you know, when we go with the flow and just kind of resist that which we think we expect to happen, like, oh, I want this to happen now and I have to be on this perfectly regimented schedule. It's just, it seems so unnatural. <laughs> It does feel a little bit unnatural, and it's breaking away from the convention. Oh, Christy, I'm hearing a feedback. Oh, are you? Oh, wow, yeah. you sound perfect coming through to me. I wonder... Yeah. Have you got ah. headphones on? I do. Um, it's oh, a bit of a distorted, <laughs> a bit of a distorted um, delay coming through. Oh, that's a bummer. I was just thinking how crystal clear we're coming through to each other yeah. this time. Cause I know we've had a couple Wookiees and stuff join us in the past. Um, <laughs> maybe that's some right. big, loud cat meows and funny things like that. But is it uh, reverbing? Uh, maybe we can have Adam uh, reconnect you? No, it sounds like um, if somebody had their speakers on or something, it's coming through on the microphone. But I've got my headphones on. I'm not working through the speakers. Okay. All right. Well, you know, if it gets too bad or maybe on the break, we'll try reconnecting or something. But sure. I'm pretty, to me, you're crystal clear. And, oh, all right. I'm looking at the chat, and apparently they hear a little bit of feedback on your end as well. Huh. Yeah. That's weird. I, yeah, that's okay. okay. All right, so are you comfortable? I mean, you can talk okay, or is it yes, reverb yeah, really good. bad? I'm okay. Good. All right, okay, so moving on. So superwooradio.com. So you can either go sign up for the newsletter there or your updates on Facebook so people can find out exactly when you feel uh, like being on. George, you kind of <laughs> took a break after you had that wonderful world tour and got to meet all your fans and friends and star family from around the world and then decided, well, I guess it's time to write a book. I don't really want to write a book, but... <laughs> so exactly. tell us about that process. <laughs> oh, look, even even when we were meeting you in Chicago and that, even before then, people were saying, George, you've got to write a book, you've got to write a book. And I'm like, well... I don't want to write a book. I'm not a bookie. I don't read books. I don't, you know, I'm not into books. And, uh, you know, I've bought probably about 20, 20 books or something. I've, I've only read about 10 books in my life. Most of them are just sitting on the shelf and waiting to be read. And, you know, it seemed like a good idea at the time when I bought them. And, and Cynthia was saying to me, you know, it feels like you should be writing a book. And Jason, everybody around me, basically, George, you really should be writing a book. And, um, and then I thought to myself, well, you know, I, I resisted, I resisted, and I, 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 the, the honest truth was I didn't feel it because I'm a person who likes to feel um, things in life, and uh, I wasn't feeling a book. But after we got back and I got time to sit back and just relax and and basically contemplate the world tour and, and feel back and contemplate my life, uh, that's when it started rising up from within me. And I just turned around to Cynthia one day and I said, Oh, I feel like I, I'm ready to write a book, and um, and it, it just took off from there. And so about October last year, I started attempting to write a book, and my goodness, didn't that take us on a journey? Because we thought it's just going to be a little baby booklet, you know, 80, mm -hmm. 80 pages or something like that. Yeah. And uh, it's turned into quite um, quite a piece of work. 
Definitely. Well, I had fun looking at your diagrams and everything. So let's kind of talk about that. Um, I know you took some rest and a little bit of time off the talk show circuit and everything. Let me ask you this before we talk about your book. What what did you learn the most during this process of getting the book out there? And, you know, I, I have I hear that all the time, too. Christy, you should write a book. And I'm just like, uh, I don't write. Don't you know these things? And I'm sure that, of course, is coming from a fear, some type of fear, maybe not being good enough or whatever, whatever it is. It's, you know, something I have. I'm just wondering if you were able to see that or, or, or better realize some of your self-perceived limitations and kind of break through it doing this and look back and like, oh, that wasn't so difficult. Why Why didn't I do this sooner? <laughs> Did you have any of those revelations? Yeah, I didn't feel like, why didn't I do this sooner? Honestly, I didn't because of my um, just feeling the groove that my life is flowing in. So it's not just a matter of the fees holding back. Also, the fees hold you back because the timing's not right. So that's why the fees are still there. And they serve a purpose. So it's all about timing in the greater scheme of things. So I would say if you're not feeling a book at the moment, it's not time for you to write the book. But when, when the time is there, the feeling will be there. You will know. And uh, it will just happen. And for me, at the beginning of, of writing the book, I thought I was just going to, like I said, write something simple. And it was an incredibly cathartic process for me. It, it changed me. It really changed me. And uh, it humbled me. Uh, it also um, made me a stronger person because of what we went through while we were writing the book. It was really, um, you know, we were at war most of the time while we were writing that book. It was a very, very difficult time for us and we had to really um, uh, go into our cave and become a bit of a recluse because we had to focus so intently on what we were doing because there was days that Cynthia and I were knocked out. They, basically, it was like we were drugged and um, we were knocked out and couldn't, you know, we were just walking around like zombies and bumping into walls and, um, you know, going through some really down sort of days. And there was other days that, you know, we were just, I had enough energy to sit here and write. Some days I sat in front of the computer and managed only to put out, you know, two, three paragraphs after a whole day's work. Mm -hmm. um, and there was other days where I just got stuck in and, and, you know, got quite a few pages out in just a few hours. So, again, it was um, it was quite an extraordinary journey. And uh, we could we had beings turning up in our house, Christy. We had beings manifesting. We had beings, one being manifested, um, an ancient Assyrian um, feline-type being, which is on it like you could see, because I showed Cynthia when she, it, it actually manifested in front of Cynthia and uh, swore at her and, you know, told, wow. basically expressed how angry they are that we're putting this information out. Wow. And uh, when she explained it to me, I, because um, I was in here and the kitchen's on the other end of the house and, um, you know, I I was quite, um, on one level a bit disturbed, but on another level I know that she's a very powerful being and they're frightened of us, so that's why they're behaving that way. So I didn't have too many concerns really in the bigger picture. Um, and um, anyway, after Cynthia explained what the being looked like, I pulled out a picture of an ancient Assyrian stone relief, and it's one of the ancient Assyrian gods that uh -huh. uh, manifested. And um, they, because they're part of the group that established religious um, infrastructures on the planet, you see. Okay. So by us putting this information out, which transcends all their infrastructures, all their dogma and doctrines and all this sort of stuff, um, it, they're really upset because they're going to lose their grip on humanity. They don't want the, um, their systems being exposed to humanity, and that's what we're doing. We're exposing yeah. them. So there were some very trying times for us and um, in that way, challenging times. But uh, we, we're happy that we um, stuck to our, you know, our, we, we were true to our sovereign spirits and, and felt that we really needed to get this information out to humanity because... You know, in all honesty, from the feedback we're getting, we, we certainly must be doing something right. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> okay, so basically, in doing your book, you just waited. You knew when the time was right, just kind of was inspired. Okay, well, now I have something to write about and just kind of let it flow. You didn't push yourself if all you could put out was a paragraph and... 
just went with it like that. Yeah, and there were some days I knew, don't even bother sitting in front of okay. the computer. So I, I, that were the days I got to do a bit of maintenance on the house or, you know, like go um, and cut the grass or something. And um, Yeah, but, that's really cathartic. Most, yeah, but um, most of that fell by the wayside because um, the focus of of the amount of energy and time, sometimes, sometimes it was, you know, 16-hour days in front of the computer and day after day and, yeah, it was it was a really really big process. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's when you when you end up writing a book like this, it has to do with life on such a deep level. Um, you give everything you've got when you do it. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm so glad you got it together and got to take your break, and hopefully yeah. you're getting lots of rest and recovering from this. And <laughs> congratulations, uh, getting it out there and on the release. And you talk about a lot in your book. I remember earlier um, when you were on the show, you said, oh, it's just going to be a little pamphlet. <laughs> Well, it's definitely much bigger than that, and lots of diagrams, and just to give people a little sneak preview, uh uh-oh, I hear the music, so we'll give a sneak preview (laughs) when we come back. Joining us here tonight, Soul Journeys on AmericanFreedomRadio.com, our special guest tonight, George Cavasilas. We're talking about his new book, Our Universal Journey, which you can find at his website, ouruniversaljourney.com.au. And I guess if for some reason you're having problems getting to it, like it seemed to clear up for me already, George, but in case... I don't know. We had a little GoDaddy issue last week, and certain locations weren't allowed to see certain websites. So I'll just give out your old one, too. I know you're trying to transition, but if for some reason you're getting a block, then just go to our-journey-home.com. Um, anyways, that'll be switched soon. I just kind of wanted to give you, uh, give the listeners a little preview about some of the things you tackle in your book. Um, the manipulation of history, um, of course, what you call the four primordial questions of life. Who are we? Where do we come from? What are we doing here? And where are we headed? Um, of course, the road to compression and creating the galactic womb. So much information I want to talk about. You also um, uncover the supreme cosmic deception and, of course, uh, talk about uh, religion and hidden knowledge and such, um, the moon, uh, extraterrestrials. And, you know, the, the, I think the incident you just described, with the uh, ancient Syrian god showing up and, you know, kind of giving you a little bit of resistance or trying to intimidate you a little just proves how important this information really is, kind of breaking that paradigm. And, you know, as you talk about our universal journey, I'd like to first discuss, um, you know, what the four questions. Who are we? What have you discovered in your journey? Yeah, that, that they are the big ones, aren't they? And uh, we feel that we've given it a really good crack, and, and um, so do a lot of other people, apparently, um, with the feedback we're getting. And, and the, I suppose the, the main question to ask before we actually go into um, answering those four is how deeply immersed do we feel that we are into the, um, I would say, the programs and control systems that are, you know, programming us, that are controlling us, that are suppressing us. And, you know, a lot of people talk about ego and we must get rid of our egos and and what have you. And looking at it from a much larger perspective, there's the ego of our earthly personality. And uh, I, my, my interpretation of what ego is here on earth is basically... Um, to give a modern day definition of it is it's your personality interface. Mm. So I can't, I can't talk to you without uh, my being, my greater being working through this interface um, called the personality. And it's kind of like the software on your computer. You can't really communicate with a computer uh, unless you work through the interface programs, which are software packages. And um, so... It, it's the same kind of thing, just to give it an, uh, as an uh, analogy. And so people tend to focus on just the earthly aspect of that scenario. And what people don't talk about is the cosmic ego. 
and they don't realise that. A lot of people don't even realise that there one exists, and because there's been so much focus here on just the earthly domain and the earthly ego, and so I've what I've done is exposed a system. Um, okay, back to the earthly ego. Our egoic um, earthly ego resides in the mind construct in the mental paradigm and the mental programs. That's the um, the aspect of us, which is the egoic aspect of us, that um, is being influenced by external programs, external influences. It's being run by those. So we're not in control of that aspect of our ourselves because we're functioning um, in the matrix and uh, the matrix is controlling that part of us. So what we're trying to do now is realign our ego to function under the auspice of our soul and our heart uh, rather than uh, residing and functioning in the uh, mind matrix and so knowing that that's where the ego resides is in the the, the in intellectual and mind matrix constructs and programs there's also the cosmic ego but where does that reside and uh, you know and that resides in a light uh, matrix construct and program so there's the great arena of the universe and we have an aspect of us that is um, I call it the traveling spirit some people refer to that as soul but I have a different definition of soul soul is much greater than that because my soul is pure and sanctified no one can touch that aspect of me so to me that's what my soul is but other people call this spirit essence within the great arena or the cosmic arena of the universe um, and they call that soul, and I don't agree with that definition, but I just wanted to make that distinction. And uh, so that aspect of us has an ego. Uh, it's the ego that's required to function in the great arena. And uh, where does that reside? So now we're going to another level. So we're not, you know, we've got the men mental mind matrix programs here on Earth, but out there in the cosmic arena, there's all these light-based programs, very high-level, sophisticated programs, and that's the chakra programs. And mm. they are light-based programs, and that's where the cosmic ego resides. And a lot of people, um, you know, the feedback we're getting of all the people who never resonated with this chakra kundalini thing. And I've exposed what it's all about. And uh, we are existing beyond the need for those sorts of energies, those sorts of light programs. And um, people, if you don't have that point of reference beyond these programs, you're going to make that your everything, and you're going to go for that version of enlightenment and yeah. what we're trying to explain to people is hang on a minute you know because we've been there we've done those versions of enlightenments before we've had previous lives on the planets where we engaged in those sorts of um, doctrines and practices and we ended up in certain areas within the universe it took us it calibrates you to a certain paradigm within the universe and uh, we've reincarnated here on earth now and we're saying to people that's not what you think it is it'll take you to a particular place but it's not the be all and end all and um you know it's quite confronting for a lot of people because it, this is what all religions and and doctrines and and practices are based on it's it's the same program so whether someone's doing an eastern philosophy whether they're doing the chakra kundalini pineal thing uh, it's no different to someone who's a a christian who's doing the seven seals holy ghost pineal thing mm -hmm. so it's exactly the same it's just different cultural interpretation it's presented differently to d different cultures and um and it's identical it's exactly the same thing so it's going to have different names and it's going to have a different approach and it's going to have a different marketing campaign but it's the same doctrines and the same practices that have been sold to the masses and it's quite confronting from people for people to realize that but it does get explained in detail um, you know, what is the Kundalini, who created it, why it was created, how it was created at the service, it, it, uh, the purpose of it, you know, its purposes for existing and how it interacts with the chakra system and what gets created when it does and who does all that infrastructure, all those software, cosmic light software programs, who does that all benefit when they're all functioning within our systems? Yeah, and I mean... Aren't the chakras and kundalini and all of these things that we uh, read about and, and learn about, aren't they kind of just man-made constructs? I mean, whether we gave seven chakras or nine chakras or 360 chakras a name or not, they would still exist. 
Well, the, we have energetic centres on our, on our body. I don't say we don't, but to say that we have those particular seven in that format and that is a program. And when you give that program your attention and your awareness, you feeding it your intention, your intent, you're empowering that program and you are steering yourself into the domains where that program is calibrated to. That program has been overlaid over the top of us as a humanity and it's designed to steer us into a particular domain within the universe. And we, you know, you don't have, you know, you'll be told by the creators of these programs that you can't exist without them, that they are a natural part of your makeup. And that's just a lie. Yeah. They're not a natural part of my makeup. I don't have them anymore. I got rid of them and I didn't get rid of them as in live in denial of them or throw them away. I, I, bunched them all together into one energetic um, ball and I embraced it into my greater heart um, because it's been an aspect of me throughout this lifetime and I'm not going to live in denial of anything. I embrace all life on all levels. So I, I, you embrace everything. You take it all into your heart, you know, the purity and the sanctity of your heart. It's so simple, yet people don't get it. They'd rather the complexity of all these programs and doctrines and practices because that's what appeals to the you know, not only the earthly ego, but also the cosmic ego. Mm, okay. So, I mean, I guess the reason I asked that uh, about the chakras is, you know, as we tend to be exposed to more information, every new truth we discover, we attach to it, you know, kind of like the old one. It's like, oh, okay, now I get it. That was all lies, but this is the truth. And I, I think sometimes it tends to limit us because, you know, we're all taught different things depending on what culture you're from. And, you know, we can, all right, well, this chakra is red and it resonates with this and this is what it does and this one's yellow. And, yeah, perhaps yeah. that's all true, but it's just one little teeny fraction of all there is beyond that. So I think even, you know, the new teachings, uh, people who are just being exposed to chakras and kundalinis and, you know, for what we were talking about, it just seems that, you know, when we find a, a new discovery or a new teaching, we hold on to that as if that's the only truth and there's nowhere else to search. You know, exactly. So. Oh, exactly. Well, so well put, Christy, because, you know, people are making this their everything. Mm -hmm. They're saying this, this is a true enlightenment and this is what's going to connect people, you know, yeah. through the, the avenue of practicing or engaging and getting involved in or immersing oneself into these programs and practices and doctrines. This is, people think this is the only genuine path to enlightenment. And yeah. I don't realize, for starters, if you do it through the pineal gland, you know, where does it reside? It resides at the brain. Okay, so what is that? That's a, a mind-based form of enlightenment, for starters. So you're yeah. going to go into mental constructs within the, the, the great arena of the universe, into the cos great cosmic arena, right? So that's where you're calibrating yourself into. And another thing is, for the pineal to be activate, activated, it needs DMT to be released. So what you're practicing... What you're engaging in is a chemical-induced form of enlightenment. Mm -hmm. And sure, you could say, oh, but that's part of the physical process is driven, you know, behind the scenes by more energetic programs, but that's still it. I mean, just going back to the purity and the sanctity of your own heart, which is, you know, the, the, the pathway, the kingdom of heaven is within, as it said. You know, you go back to your heart, and I'm not talking the heart chakra, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm talking your heart, your core essence and your soul. If you go into the heart chakra, you're still engaging in that software program. It's a cosmic software program. Mm -hmm. And you will go to the realities of the creators of those programs because that's what it's designed to do. But if you go deeper than that, go beyond the chakra system, go into the core of your essence, of your spirit, soul, essence, and then from there you go to your eternal essence, so this is this is about being you. It's about being authentic. It's about being organic. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you speak about that because I just, you know, I, I mean, we've been deceived for so long. And, and I don't think that anyone is intentionally, well, I don't want to say anyone, but most people are not intentionally deceiving us as far as, you know, putting out information about the chakras. I think it's very well and helpful and a very good guideline, but 
that's not all there is. There's more out there. And I'm glad you're exposing that. In your book, George, I can't remember which chapter, but I was reading um, where you basically said something like, well, this information is going to piss off all of the, you know, new agers. And <laughs> so <laughs> can we talk about that a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> well, it is because, um, you see, what we call the New Age movement is basically a more sophisticated version of religion. And uh, it's got more whistles and bells and it bedazzles people and there's pretty lights and more pretty colours and, you know. And for, so for all the people that have gotten away or have um, left, excuse me, the, um, the dogma and the restrictions of religious um, doctrine and dogma and constructs, um, you know, they had to create another program that was going to capture the consciousness, the rising consciousness of the other people. Hmm, absolutely. That makes a lot of sense, but it is that time, George, so please hold that right there. We will be back after this short break. Stay tuned, everyone. George Kavosilis here on SoulJourneysRadio.com. Thanks for joining us here tonight, SoulJourneysRadio.com, with our special guest, George Kavasilas, joining us from lovely Adelaide, Australia. His website is OurUniversalJourney.com.au, and we're talking about his new book. Um, it's available as ebook edition, um, and the print is supposed to be out this weekend, but check the website uh, just in case, and we left off, uh, George, uh, talking about, um, you know, how sometimes our beliefs and even new teachings can kind of limit us. And you're, you know, basically stepping over the edge here and trying to expand our awareness and letting us know there's much more out there. And I found the passage in your book um, <laughs> on the break that I was looking for. And I'm just going to read this quote. And if you would elaborate, elaborate on it, please. Uh, you said, and this was when you were talking about the chakra body and chakra system, you say, I realize there are many New Age healers that won't like what is being said here, but they need to come to terms with the fact that their healing modalities belong to a lower realm of the universe, and that if they wish to move beyond these lower realms, they will eventually need to let go of the attachment to their modality. Boom. <laughs> Boom, yeah, ouch. Um, you know, and I'll say ouch because I went out when I had that uh, realisation occur within me when I was doing healings myself. Um, so I've been there, done that, so I'm not just throwing mud on, on healers. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm still he being a healer but in a different way. Um, I'm providing knowledge and information to empower people um, from within, so it's um, it, it's easy to take people out of context too. So I will elaborate, and thank you for helping allowing me to, um, Christy. See, in the higher realms, like beyond the great arena of the universe, everything is in harmony with life. So there isn't any dis-ease. Okay, so there nothing needs healing, and there's no such thing as healers. The very concept that something needs healing belongs to the lower realms of the universe mm. so in the in the fifth dimension the the real fifth dimension right and above so sort of like beyond the great arena and beyond the great void right. of the universe we we don't healers don't exist it's it's not something that exists there because nothing needs healing so again if people are going to transcend um back to the higher realms back to um reconnecting with their higher self and being expressing that soul essence in its purity and its sanctity then they're going to need to let go of the need to be a healer mm. and uh and and that's a fact of it's, it's reality so whether you know the, the need to be a healer and using these uh, um, practices and doctrines of healing um, belongs to the lower realms and as you know it it it's it's the identity uh it, it's what the cosmic ego identifies itself with and uh is is in one way it's one of these programs one of these healing programs mm. okay so and do you so think if, when we have that when we have that life of servitude of life of service towards others and we're doing it on a cosmic level you know and people are still practicing these healing modalities and you know they haven't transcended the great void of the universe and gone move beyond the great arena of the universe and i just want to 
give people a quick understanding of how big the great arena of this universe is. There are pseudo-universal paradigms within the great arena of the universe. And the great arena is the, um, you could say, almost the bottom half of this main universe. So um, just to give people an idea of how big the great arena is and the, the type of uh, paradigms that we're talking about. Mm, okay, thanks for clearing that up. And I actually had notes down about that to ask you. <laughs> so mm. let me ask you about, I mean, I love what you have to say that that nothing needs healing. So is this need to heal that I think most of us have, you know, I don't know whether it's coming from a savior complex or our earthly ego or, or perhaps even a cosmic ego, or is there really nothing to heal here now? Maybe even that is an illusion. Uh, no, I will say all of the above is, is it an illusion? No, it's not an illusion. These are energies that we're bringing back into balance. That's reality. It's definitely not an illusion. And, uh, once we do bring them back into balance, then we transcend the need for anything to be healed. And, uh, for any, any, um, we bring back into balance any form of dis-ease or imbalances. Okay. And so that you, um, uh, talk about is in the fifth dimension and above. In the model that I present of the universe that I personally experienced in my travels, yes. Okay. Now, uh, speaking of models, <laughs> on uh, page 23 and 27, you have a diagram of the universal model, and you have um, 12 different uh, levels or dimensions, and then the great void, which you just briefly mentioned, and then another smaller void. Can you um, kind of explain to us what the universal model is? Well, basically, it's um, it's it's a generic sort of a basic outline structure of the way this universe is structured with to do with frequency levels of frequency. So what we call a different dimensional level, we, we're basically um, saying that all life within those domains vibrate at a certain frequency level and they are their expressions and the way they go about doing things is different to other frequency levels and um, we occupy all these levels uh, another um, trick you could say is to have people thinking that they exist here and they must strive to get themselves back to these other realms these other vibratory realms and I'm trying to remind people is that all we need to do is reconnect with the aspects of ourselves that are already there. Mm -hmm. You see, you all need to do is reintegrate our fragmented aspects. And once, once we go within, then we can start reintegrating with those greater aspects of ourselves. And we occupy every single realm in this universe. Mm -hmm. we, ha okay. we, have, we have expressions of ourselves experiencing because... This universe is a really big place, and the reason we're in it is to experience everything it has to offer and learn its construct. We're learning how to become light, so which is what the basic construct of this universe is about. And uh, and so we've projected ourselves into all these uh, whole myriad of domains and realities and paradigms because we want to have all those experiences. It's incredible how varied this universe is in its expressions and its um you know its its domains and realities so incredible to understand that about ourselves yeah. okay so are you saying that each of us individually are have pieces of ourselves or our soul's expression on each of these dimensions simultaneously yes wow huh and, okay. and not only that not only that christy but in the great arena you have millions of yourself scattered everywhere. You, you, we have expressed ourselves as planetary systems, as star systems, as galaxies, because we've co-created along the way. So we are responsible for those realities out there. We've got aspects of us that are galactic systems. You're a galaxy, and I'm inside of you um, because my soul, through the law of attraction, L-O-R-E, my soul is is attracted to your vibration that you're expressing as a galactic reality and so i want to go inside of you and have uh, an incarnational experience because that's what my soul needs it needs that vibrational experience to get that greater learning oh wow i love that i mean i know it sounds 
probably kind of out there maybe, (laughs) you know, maybe if you're new to George and, you know, some of this information, but it feels really right. So I'd love for you to expand. Uh, You talk about uh, multiverse and parallel universe. They're not the same. So what is the multiverse versus parallel universe and how do they fit into your universal model and each of the millions of different expressions of ourselves? Yeah, so we'll start with um, uh, universe, parallel universes are what uh, what science sees as parallel universes, quantum physics sees as parallel universes, is those pseudo-universal paradigms which I spoke of and are all contained within the great arena of this universe. Mm-hmm. Like when I don't, I'm not meaning one or two universal paradigms. I'm meaning, you know, you really can't count how many there are. So yeah. that gives you an idea of how big the great arena of this universe is. Now, when we talk about the multiverse, what I'm talking about there is outside of this universe. So you have even your own universe. You're the creator of a universe out there. Now, your universe has a different expression because you've got your own universal personality. It's not like this one. And Mm so I've I've put an aspect of me inside of your universe out there um, because I want to learn your construct. So this, this universe, the construct is light. Yours is something else. Mm, okay. And again, if you're gonna if you're gonna say light is all there is, um, you're instantly putting a finite existence on life. Life is infinite. We are infinite. Oh, definitely. My gosh, George, this is going way too fast. I hear the music again. <laughs> I think we're in a parallel universe where time, <laughs> there, there's probably like three minutes an hour. <laughs> so we're going to be back right after this. Stay tuned, everyone. All right, welcome back. Top of the second hour here tonight with George Kavasilis, author of Our Universal Journey, which you can find at his website, Our Universal Journey. Dot com dot au and I don't know I mean were, were we really joking about the length of the segments in the show is time really speeding up George or is it all in our head are we just having too much fun <laughs> um, no it is speeding up yes, I mean how fast has this year gone every year now is just going so much faster and people go oh it's because you're getting older and it's it's not <laughs> even our kids are saying it and uh, yeah time is definitely speeding up. Can we actually, um, I don't want to really use the term control, um, but do we have any influence on when, uh, you know, time can speed up or slow down? Yeah, of course we can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it'll depend where your intention emanates from, where it originates from. Um, if you're going to do it from an egoic point of view, then, you know, there's going to be consequences. But if you do it from an organic point of view, from your soul essence, uh, from your heart, then you do it in synchronicity with life around you and it's far more effective and uh, it's far more cohesive and and synchronised and harmonious is probably the word to use. All right. Well, I'm going to ask everyone listening to intend (laughs) from the heart that we slow time down for this next hour here. (laughs) So we can fit more in. Exactly. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So if you will, but (laughs) all right. So we left off talking about um, the universe, um, the parallel universes versus multiverses and um I don't know. I sometimes have a hard time remembering where I am, so to speak. I, I sometimes, it seems like my dreams or visions bleed through into this world or vice versa, because I'm not even really sure which is real. Maybe they're all real. Maybe none of them are. Um, but I, is, are these experiences, whether it's in the dream world or meditation, et cetera, could, would they be considered parallel universes? Uh, I would say more often than not, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I would say that. Because so you- the construct of the other universes in the multiverse are not light, so it's beyond light. So, you know, we're, we're talking about experiencing things um, within the construct of light. It's Mm -hmm. it's a completely different way of being these other universes. So the aspects of us down here inside this universe can't comprehend life beyond light at this stage. Okay. So do you feel that 
Um, gosh, I don't even know how to word it because I'm I, need, in a I, need to, I don't even understand. <laughs> I, need, I need to interject just there, Christy, because um, when I say life beyond light, um, uh, anybody with a religious program or a new age program will instantly go, well, you know, where, the, where there's no light, there's darkness. So they're going to go back to that dark versus light mentality. And, uh, and no, I'm, I'm not talking about that sort of realities beyond light. You know, I'm, I'm talking beyond um, the creator of this universe, the real creator of this universe, okay? And when you do connect with that consciousness, um, what we call God, the creator of this universe, instantly that being in your remembrance and that level of your beingness that is connected is one with this, the creator of this universe instantly will tell you, hey, you, you exist beyond I do. We're all infinite, so I'm just the creator of this universe, you know? And, mm. um, and you exist beyond this level of my creation. So um, being infinite is infinite. And, you know, it brings about the question, doesn't it? The big question. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's... Okay, so many questions I'm hearing. So God versus gods. What is or who is God? Who and what is God? Well, yeah. you know, first of all, um, I'm going to say we've all got the answer and it's within us. So it's no biggie, right? Yes, it's a big deal. It's the biggest one of them all. Um, <laughs> and, and because we're in a, a universe of contrasting expressions or duality, whatever you want to call it, um, on the other flip side of that coin, uh, it's no big deal at all because we all, all know it anyway. And yes, mm -hmm. we have the creator of this universe. Um, and then there's the God of religions. Ah, okay. Right? Okay. So now the God of religions who's claiming, right? This mm -hmm. is an entity who is claiming to be the creator, not only of this universe, but of all life on all levels of all that is and all that exists. Everywhere. So that means beyond this universe. And you can't have that. You can't have one being claiming to be that when life is infinite. There is no totality. Yeah. There's no beginning, there's no end. We always have been, we always will be. So if, if you are in the mindset that a God being created you and you did not exist prior to that moment, then you are still within the confines of the God with a small g, God with a small g program. And uh, in the, the programs that this being has disseminated on the planet who's claiming to be God with a big g. Okay, and so you refer to God with a big G as universal creator in your book? Correct. Okay, and have you gotten any closer to discovering who or what that is? Uh, well, there's no name for it, really. Even we put that label God, but it's... it's yeah, <laughs> like chakras. It's, it's the being who is the creator of this universe, okay? That's probably about as close as we can get that this other God is the creator of these other universal paradigms. It's created universes. It is the creator of a universe, right? But it's the creator of a universe and several universal paradigms within the great arena. Okay. Okay, and so... We, hang on, hang on. This is a really important point. And when we um, engage in the practices and the doctrines from this God being, this God entity we are then calibrated and we are steered, we are steering ourselves intently, which is, you know, the way this being overrides um, uh, free will, intently into its domains. So we're being lured into the domains, these universal domains. And so people are having samadhi experiences and they're traveling through the universe with God. Well, hang on a minute, you know, which God? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that's the point I'm trying to make here to people is let's look at the bigger picture here, folks, because um, relative to what we've been um, used to, the way we've been so suppressed, where people don't have that greater point of reference, you know. They're so busy immersing themselves and putting their intention and awareness into the practices of these this God entity and its angels and ascended masters and using their light and bringing their light in and all that, and that's all externalising and it's drug-taking on a cosmic level, you know, consuming all these light energies and, and blissing you out and all that sort of stuff. Well, that's what it is, and it's designed to numb you. It's designed to cut you off from your true soul, organic soul connection. Oh, okay. So would our eternal essence or our organic, you know, innate uh, 
being <laughs> that we I can't even come up with a word to define something so vast and so infinite but you know as you mentioned earlier the kingdom of god is within we we've heard that before so would the true god or the god with a big g or universal creator would all of us be little teeny tiny pieces of it yes and no okay it's both Okay, again, contrasting expressions. So there's the spark of you that you came into this universe with from beyond the universe, outside of God, okay, the creator of this universe. So we projected a spark of ourselves into this universe. At the top, like I explained this process at the beginning of the book, we merged and became one with the being who is this universe. Mm. And there we were planted a seed, a seed within our beingness. And that's what we call soul. That's um, a fractal of this entire universe. We then go down and project ourselves through this universe, experiencing. We take this incredible journey through this universe. That's why I called the book Our Universal Journey, because that's exactly what we've done. We have journeyed and experienced every single paradigm and reality there is to experience in this universe. And through each of those experiences, those, the wisdom gained feeds the soul and the soul grows. And we've come back here to earth, onto this earth now, to bring it all back, reintegrate everything that we've been and everything that we've done and everything that we've seen and experienced. And, you know, we co-created this all along the way in this incredible journey. And we're bringing all of our journey back into balance, back to completion. Mm. Okay, that makes sense. Let me ask you this. There were a few questions in the chat, and uh, one of them they were asking about uh, changing timelines. Um, they'd like to understand, well, I would too. <laughs> we would all like to understand more how the timelines work. And she asks, is there a positive one and a negative one? And where are we right now? Okay, um, positive and negative. We're, we're right at the cusp. We're at the, I call it in the book, I call it the crossroads. And uh, we are at that intersection point. And it's going to be it's a bit like Grand Central Station in a way. So let me explain these concepts. We have the, what I consider the organic timeline. And uh, that's the one where we are one with the consciousness of our Mother Earth and our Father Son and our, our galactic mother. So therefore we are one with the organic um, energies of the universe, the organic consciousness of the universe. Then you have this overlay, which is what I call the synthetic light and the synthetic universe, which is run by this God entity, right? There's a group of gods, but there's one that's, you know, wants to be the man, so to speak. And, um, and so that there's going to be a branching off because there'll be people who will be lured into the paradigms of this God entity and then there'll be those of us who want to see it through with our Earth Mother. I'm staying here. I incarnated for a reason and I'm having a very deep and intimate relationship with my Earth Mother, you know, and, and I love her dearly and I'm going to be staying with her because I want to birth through the womb of the Divine Mother who, mm -hmm. who is the consciousness that has manifested this planetary reality into being in this this fractal of the universe, you know, the living library of the universe. And um, and so this other timeline, you can say it's one other, but what's going to happen is that's going to fracture into multiple timelines. So you get people that are going to go with that group of ETs, you get other people that are going to go with a different group of ETs, um, you get people that will be um, lured into certain different um, varieties of paradigms by this God entity because some will be worshipping the Jesus character of the church, um, which is not the true Christ, by the way, and I explain that, and I know it's going to freak people out, but mm -hmm. you've got to understand where that name, that label, that personality of the Christ comes from because that was handed to the masses by the priestly caste who were the very same priests who crucified the Christ 2,000 years ago. So I, that's something, that's a big one. That's a really big one for people like, or just remember this one statement, even the elite will be deceived. So mm. just ask yourself, how deep does this deception go? And yeah. when you realize that the actual name Jesus comes from Isus, which is um, a derivative of Zeus, and it's the cult of Zeus from ancient Greece and the ancient priesthoods, which um, also uh, have a tie to the ancient priesthoods of Horus. And the eye of Horus is not the eye of Horus, it's the eye of the priestly caste. So they have this habit of... Um, hijacking the identity of the true Christ um, yes. is throughout every culture. And like you've got your Buddha, you've got, 
you know, your normal Buddha, the original Buddha, which is the happy Buddha, and then you've got the religious Buddha, which is the one with the pine cone headdress and the kundalini flame out the top of the head. So, again, you know, you've got what the... And I explain about all this stuff and the priestly caste and how they've hijacked the identity of all the great wisdom teachers that have come to our planet. Because to me, Buddha and Christ and Krishna and um, the uh, Ra, the original Ra, and all that, they're all one and the same being, Quetzalcoatl. Yes. It's all the same, okay? Yes. And, and the feathered serpent, Quetzalcoatl, doesn't mean, um, uh, you know, a winged dragon, because what it actually means is the feathers is the bird tribes, the serpent tribes, and it's two contrasting us aspects of love and knowledge. So when you have that greater wisdom and understanding, you understand love and knowledge are two foundational expressions that manifest everything into being in this universe. So again, it's, um, it's understanding it from a greater capacity and not taking things from a, um, a lower interpretation and taking things on a more literal level as well. Oh, I love that. And I loved you mentioned the bird tribes because I, I seem to have a, a pretty good connection with who I believe are, I just call them bird people. I don't really know. <laughs> Never really read it in a book. I just only know, well, the little that I do based on my limited experiences. Um, let me ask you this. Someone uh, put on the chat. He says, well, I really believe George, but how did we end up with so many a-holes on earth then? <laughs> well, you know, I've been one, and um, and I'm sure at times I still am, and and <laughs> you know, we're doing the best we can. And it's interesting the concept when you understand that we're all extraterrestrials, right? We all come from out there, yeah. and we all just incarnate here, so we're all you know come from um, off the earth um, and away from the earth. And some of us have been here longer than others. Sure, we've had repeated incarnational cycles, but we don't come lifetime after lifetime straight after the other. Sometimes we do, but more often. That's not the case. So, again, um, what these God entities have done is they've tried to force, because you, you can ask some people, they go, I was told to come here. I was ordered by God to come here and incarnate. And you go, oh, okay, right. Well, obviously that's <laughs> not what I know, because the God I know does not judge, is not authoritarian, and you know what I mean. It's none of that sort of stuff. So uh, which God are we referring to here then? So because of who and what we are, we are a fractal of the universe and um, we access more life force than any other race in the universe. So these God entities are feeding uh, uh, off our energy because they get fed more energy, more power. They access more power through us than they can through any other race. And so they've tried to get as many of their people incarnate on Earth to um, give them more energy to feed off. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> and, um, okay, so getting back to the timeline thing, what, what timeline are we actually on right now? Uh, well, I'm, I'm walking between worlds. So I've got a foot in the camp of the organic timeline, and I've got a foot in the camp of the illusionary timeline, which okay. is a synthetic universe. And I have to because I was leaving the illusion or the synthetic timeline um, it's, it's, I call it synthetic, it's real, it's tangible, it exists, but I call it synthetic relative to the organic one, okay? And um, I had to come back into the matrix to do this work to help inform humanity, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's lots of us who are doing it. There's lots of us who'd rather be doing other things, but we had to come back and take care of our responsibilities and obligations towards our human family. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm kind of, you know, what popped in my head when you were saying that is, is the quote, be in the world and not of it. So perhaps we can choose which timeline we're on. I guess uh, definitely we need to discuss this further, but it's that time. So hang on. We'll be back after this short break with George Kavasilis here on souljourneysradio.com. I'm back, and thanks so much for joining us here tonight with George Kavasilis here on souljourneysradio.com. And so much information to talk about, so little time. So keep intending that we slow time down during the rest of the show because we have <laughs> lots of great questions here. I'd love to get to them all. Um, <laughs> but we left off. I, I'm not sure if you heard me as we went to break, but... What came to mind when you were uh, talking about the organic timeline versus the synthetic timeline is be in the world and not of it. Is that kind of similar, at least, or does that resonate with you? 
Oh, yeah, of course it does. Fantastic uh, wisdom, be in the world of not of it. And uh, what that means is to, um, you know, be here organically and uh, try not to engage into the synthetic matrix as much as you can. And it's up to the individual to work out, you know, where the boundaries for themselves are, what they consider to be the synthetic matrix, what they sort of consider to be the organic, uh, you know, um, construct of the of the planet here. And the more you contemplate this, the more you come to realise and see for yourself what what is the the in synthetic overlay with you know um, universal law L A W, which is different to the one I talk about L O R E, because L A W is a synthetic authorian uh, construct that has been overlaid over the top of the natural order, and universal law is a natural unfoldment, the natural organic construct of life, and. Um, that's that's to me the two um, to explain the two different constructs and also the um, the way of life using the technologies we're using and how they're detrimental to the earth and the environment and also to uh, uh, to us and the solar system and and so on and so on. So um, walking between the worlds is is kind of like I have to um, myself. I feel the need to delve back into the matrix because I need to do my work. Like I said, it's my responsibilities and my obligations I have towards my human family. And and to a degree, you're doing it too, Christy, because you're doing this radio program and whatever yes. else you've got going on in your life. And we, we, you know, it's easy just to walk away and not partake. And I feel that's a bit of a cop-out. And um, But then it's a bit, bit judgmental because for some people it's not their journey. Mm. To, um, to turn around, it's not their responsibility. Uh, they don't have the same set of responsibilities that we do, for example. So I don't want to taint everybody with the brush there. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to be realistic about this and say, you know, I've, I've had to compromise my own uh, wants um, on one level of my beingness because I was in a really cosy place at one stage in my life. I didn't have a computer. I didn't have a mobile phone. I didn't have any credit cards. I didn't have anything like that, and I was so out of the matrix, and it was bliss, like as being organic bliss, not artificial bliss. It was, mm. it was beautiful, so harmonious, so synchronistic. And then, well, you know, my greater responsibilities came to the surface, and I just went, oh, well, here goes. So I turned around and dived back in, and uh, this is where we're at now. Yeah, and I, yeah, I totally see the need for that, and I'm thankful that, you know, I get to ground myself once in a while and come back to you know, reality or illusion, whatever we want to call it. And I guess mm. kind of the same thing. I I don't know. They're they're kind of interchangeable, aren't they? Um, I, I personally need someone to help ground me because otherwise I'd be up in the stars twenty four seven, and I probably wouldn't get much accomplished. So, are you saying that it's uh, possible that? Or, or plausible, perhaps, that we actually control, we can choose what timeline to take part in at any given time? Yeah, it'll be, it'll be a choice from, from this level, and okay. it'll be a choice that you will always have made from a higher level. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a choice okay. you are always going to make because, yes, we have free will, and no, we don't have free will. Ah, okay, so the path essentially is already set, but... We can, uh, okay, let's say today I decide, well, I want to be more grounded. Technically, mm. I may have already made that choice previously. I just, I'll call it free will and think that I made the choice today, even though I'm probably fooling myself. Well, Is in the that... higher realms, for example, past, present, and future exist simultaneously. Yeah, okay. So down, this aspect of us that we've projected down into this timeline is experiencing it for, as past, present, and future in, in linear fashion. So... This is the part of us um, that is making those choices uh, as, it, you know, it's, it's the illusion of making choices in a way. But um, it's, it's exciting because we get to um, create the life that we're having and we get to come down inside of it and experience it as well. So maybe there's even more than uh, two choices, organic or synthetic, for purposes of our discussion. What do they say? It's never either or. It's always both and more. So perhaps there's exactly. many timelines or perhaps none at all. Many timelines. And mm -hmm. uh, there will be, um, for those who stay with Mother Earth, it will be a, 
um, a metamorphosis and a transition, excuse me, and a transcendence out of the great arena. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> let me ask you this. There was another question on the chat um, regarding, um, well, I'll just read it word for word. It says, if the veil between the three, third dimension and fourth dimension is thinning, are we getting a lot of 4D beings entering 3D now and messing with us? And I'd also like to know, um, with the timelines, if you can add this, um, the link with December 2012. Yeah. Um, this is a really big subject. I've just started talking about it. It's taken me a long time to come to terms with it. Um, we've spoken to friends who have been feeling this for a long time as well. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, the realisation of what I'm about to share can be confronting for people. But um, it's, it's really something to contemplate for yourselves and see how you feel about it, okay? Mm -hmm. um, now, when I talked about these God entities and I talked about their doctrines and practices and what have you, and we talk about December 21, 2012, think of how many people are going to be going to all the sacred sites of the planet around that day. Yeah. And, um, and if we take into consideration um, what ley lines are, and if, you, if we can understand that ley lines are actually, uh, the meridians are actually the energetic veins of Mother Earth, and that the energy that flows through those meridians is the energetic blood of Mother Earth. And so when people are going to be going to these sacred sites, and they're going to be going there with good intention, all right? I'm not saying these people, there might be the odd group that has got evil intention, but the majority are going to be going there with good intentions, because they're going to be doing it from the goodness of their heart. They just don't realise what it is they're actually going to be doing it. So all these people that are involved in chakra kundalini meditations, all these people that are involved with ascended masters and angels and gods from these pseudo-universal paradigms, and they're going to be told, they already have been told, and they've been practising for many years, to bring the light in from what they call source, which is these, this God entity wants to bring them bring the synthetic light in from the source that creates their pseudo-universal paradigms. Do you see how they just use labels and coerce people? It's unbelievable, right? How mm -hmm. people being duped. Now, it's so clever because these beings are now overriding uh, the universal law for non-interference. This is how clever they've done it. They've got now people through, they, they are yearning to, to beg, they're praying, they're, they're literally on a cosmic level, they're begging for these beings to come and help us. So mm. what they're doing is they're bringing all these light energies in, these vibrational frequencies from these pseudo -pra universal paradigms, and they're going to anchor it in all the energetic center points on the planet. So in other words, they're going to be injecting something detrimental to our Earth Mother. They're going to be injecting and bringing in um, a, a synthetic light energy um, that is detrimental to, to the Earth Mother, the organic construct of life, and us, generally speaking. Now, these people are blinded by mm. their religions, right? And that includes New Age. It's a religion. Um, they're blinded by their techniques. They are... Um, they've been, they're, what they're suffering is the enchanted entrapment that these doctrines and practices have created, okay? And these people are doing it, what they believe is the right thing to do. But they yes. have no concept of the damage that they're going to be doing and what these God entities in, in all the different forms and varieties are doing is getting these people to create a more comfortable environment so these entities can then come here and do what wow. they need to do. And if you think about it, when you get injected with something um, into your body, doesn't your body react if it's not good for you? So yeah. what I'm going to say now is think of the consequences or contemplate the consequences of the actions of what these people are going to be doing. And I'm not going to predict exactly what's going to happen when. And this isn't about insinuating fear. This is about being realistic and being practical. And, and I know what the remedy is to this. And I'll tell you what the remedy is to this. The remedy yes. is our light 
from our hearts, from our soul essence. So if we meditate and bring our light out from within us and and use that to help soothe the earth, to help support our earth mother, because don't forget we've made this incredible, on a soul level, this contractual agreement with our the consciousness of the being who is this mother earth, right? So we're, we're, we're on her body, we're in her body, and, and we made an agreement to incarnate here to be on her body. And so she loves us, and we love her, and our souls and our hearts are one together in harmony. So she wants us to be us. She wants our light here. And if we can bring our light, and we're star seeds, right? And we're, cause we're stars out there. Star seed doesn't mean You've come just from the stars and as, as an extraterrestrial. Mm-hmm. A star seed really means that you are bringing your star light from out there and you're anchoring it here. And it's time to shine your light from your soul, from within. Be that radiant being that you are. And that will be the remedy. That's what's going to help balance things out here. I like that. I'm glad you said that, George. And, you know, as, as you were um, you know, explaining that, I kind of had a vision where you said, imagine the ley lines and such as veins of the Earth Mother, and I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, we're going to mainline her with, you know, more more dysfunction and religious yeah. beliefs, and you know, perhaps even lead to well artery damage. I mean, if we're going to swell up on her veins and gather there, et cetera, it, it might not be the healthiest choice. Yeah, see, these people have no idea how, you know, what they're actually doing because they're blinded. They've totally been brainwashed by these doctrines and practices. And so, you know, if, if we can, and, and for us to shine our light, you know, that it, it helps us to overcome worthiness issues because you've got to realize that your light is worthy. You are valued by Mother Earth. You're valued by Father Son. You're valued by your galactic mother and the, and the universal creator. You are worthy and, and be your genuine, authentic self and shine that beautiful light. Be that being that you are. And, and that's what's going to help transform this earth into a better place. Mm, okay. I think that's very wise and, and brilliant. I haven't actually heard anyone say it just that way before. So, yep, you didn't piss me off. So good try. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so <laughs> let's get all right now. Um, all right, the 4D beans and the 3D beans are we? So we're actually opening up the space for these other entities uh, to come in, right? Yeah, that's that's the whole plan. That's the big plan. That's what I feel. December 21, 2012, on one level is all about it, it it provides the um it's not all about that sorry on one level it's about that uh, it provides the uh the the way the the patterns will be of the earth the um the life cycle of the earth around the sun and the sun's life cycle within the galaxy will provide the environment for these beings to manipulate and they're manipulating the people to do the hard work for them to create the environment for them to come Okay, this is basically the big plan. And I've always said that the cycle ends on, on March, on the, on the equinox. And uh, because it's the procession of the equinoxes, it's not the procession of the solstices. And the equinox is perfect balance of dark and light, positive and negative. So there's, uh, you, you know, they're trying to get in early to do what they need to do um, before the cycle actually does end. Uh, okay, and when does it actually end, according to your understanding? Yeah, to my understanding, George's little perspective on life, <laughs> uh, it's um, the March equinox of 2013. Okay. Okay, and so that's, you know, once again, it's not like the end of the world or any, uh, you know, crazy Armageddon thing that some people are still promoting. It's essentially uh, a shift in dimension, consciousness, and understanding. Would that be? Yeah, and um, it is definitely a shift in dimension. It's an increase in frequency. And so if there's going to be an increase in frequency, we need to um, embrace change. Because if, if, you know, if we, if we always do what we've always done, we'll always get what we've always got, you know, and it, yeah. that's a fantastic saying. And, uh, and it's true. We need to change. We're changing. Mother Earth is changing. It's a symbiotic thing. So expect a lot of changes on the planet. 
and uh, the old world has to deconstruct so the new world can be born. And uh, I would say that, yeah, embrace the changes. Okay. All right. Here's a couple more questions here. Uh Uh-oh. In the chat. Never mind. I hear the music, so we'll get to that. Welcome back. Last segment here tonight on Soul Journeys Radio. Thank you so much for joining us here with George Cavasilas, uh, joining us early in the morning in Australia. So I thank you for that, George. Um, and just a reminder, uh, the ebook edition of his new book, Our Universal Journey, is available now at his website. That's ouruniversaljourney.com. Dot .au but you're going to be able to get the print book in your hands uh due out this weekend uh September 22nd so definitely check the website uh to get your copy and uh we had I was just telling you through the break I had all these notes and pages and questions and of course we Oh, maybe got through one-tenth of it. Um, so I'd just like to leave uh, the remainder of the time uh, to the listeners, of course, and their questions. So um, quickly here, George, uh, they say, if we are merging with our higher self and the veil is thinning between the third and fifth dimension where our higher self exists and co-creates the life we are living, then does that mean we are leaving linear time and will then begin creating our life from that level of our being within this level of reality? Um, well, that's what we're doing now. Um, I'm already doing that. Uh, I believe the person who's asked a question is already doing that um, because of the question that they've asked. Uh, we're already accessing the greater aspect of self. The, so the doorways at the moment, or the portals I spoke of, my ego was interpreting them as more of a, as external ones uh, in the past, and I've come to realise that they. There are, are ten minutes remaining this. in this conference. Oh wow! Okay. Where did that come from? All right, thanks. And, <laughs> and so there is um, through this period of time when I thought they were going to be external, uh, it's going to be they're more internal and. And uh, the, so the portals are happening, but they're actually internal ones. And we are accessing these greater aspects of the self, and we are anchoring these the more of us here onto the earth, um, which is helping uh, the earth to increase her frequency. And so, yes, we are going to eventually leave linear time, and we're going to go into no time. Absolutely, we are. Okay, and once again, as we discussed, uh, I guess a couple segments ago, you said it's pretty much a choice which timeline we choose to manifest and co-create in, right? Yeah, on one level, it's going to be a a choice for sure. Okay, awesome. All right, and uh, another question that came up. I'm sorry, I I, kind of skipped this one from earlier. It says... um, George, the more I'm living from my heart, the more attacks I seem to get from other people, things breaking, etc. Where is this coming from and what can we do about it? Are, quote, they, unquote, after us little people too? Um, well, to a degree, yeah, but it's mostly the, the matrix that's reacting around you. And so the matrix was happy with you. Um, because you were conforming and you were good, one of the good little sheeple and doing what you're told and um, behaving with conformity. And now when you start to live from your heart and you don't um, as much involve yourself in the old programs, the matrix around you doesn't like it and starts to react. And so you begin to realise the codependency on the energetic feeding you're having in relationships And so those friendships and relationships start to break down and you will leave those relationships unless uh, you can transform those relationships, uh, which we've experienced ourselves. And anybody who takes this journey experiences it to some degree, okay? We're all living this stuff. And it it does get sometimes very lonely and a bit sad because you do have a lot of friends that fall away. Uh, and, And sometimes they're good, you know, they're good people. They don't mean you any harm. It's just you're not an energetic match anymore. And so when you do let go of those friends, you, you realise that new ones will appear. And the more you hold on to the old ones, the more you're stopping from new ones appearing. And the more you try to hold on to the old ones, there's going to be something more severe and serious that will force you apart. And uh, because, you know, you need to move on mm. in life. And uh, we need to start realising that about our lives and about ourselves and, and the interactions we're having with life around us. So, yeah... 
It does. The, the matrix around you reacts and people can get upset and all sorts of weird things start to happen. Um, doesn't, um, it does back off. Sometimes it comes and goes in cycles. But overall, it does get easier the more you go on. Just initially is, is I would say, the most challenging part. Mm, okay. And, I mean, just as you shared with us in the first segment of this show, um, the resistance and kind of intimidation you got um, and Cynthia from the ancient Syrian god that, you know, basically don't write this. They didn't want their information out there. I mean, I think there's always going to be some kind of being that might not like hearing the truth because it is. It's going to shatter everything we think they know and, of course, disintegrate and hopefully diminish the control, the power, the hold they have over us because that's probably the worst thing in the world for them is for us to wake up and realize our higher selves, realize ourselves, our our essence, our, our true selves because... You know, the truth is, we don't need any of these people. We don't need to rely on, oh, let's say, oh, government, that's a nice savior for us, or uh, religion, or, you know, any of these control mechanisms put into play. We're really so much powerful than that. So, of course, I, I think there are forces that want to maybe dissuade us into putting information out there, or perhaps even like the... Uh, the listener um, said about her, well, I'm not even sure if it's a her, so sorry, her or him, um, the attacks they're getting by reconnecting with her heart. So it seems people aren't ready for that, right? The heart is mushy and gushy and ooey and gooey and airy and fairy, and <laughs> right? We're, we're, we're so taught that, you know, feelings and, you know, oh, don't use your logic, right? Your heart's going to deceive you. And that's so backwards. <laughs> in my it is. Opinion. It is totally backwards, you know, because they just want um, people to function from the mind matrix, and uh, and that's disempowering. <laughs> mm. So in the true sense, on a universal scale, it totally disempowers you. And um, yeah, the more we we function from the heart, it's not just it's not all just mushy and gooey. It's um, it's also very powerful. And when we talk about power, uh, we're talking about the most powerful force that exists, and uh, that is unconditional love. And it's 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 a power in the sense of uh grace it's a very graceful power and um you know that's how i'm doing what i'm doing is because that's the energy of the platform or the the foundation to my existence my expression and uh that's why i'm able to do what i'm able to do yeah absolutely i think we have time for another quick question here um george uh he says the portals are they are they genetic windows of expression, more of the 64 available amino acids, which humans use only 22 of these currently? Are they being utilized biologically by the Homo sapien? Does full 64 amino acid activation into genetic expression amount to the next evolution, which is Homo illuminus? Yeah, in, in, a, in a way, yes, and in a way, no. Um, the 64 amino acid, I, I, it's also connected to the codons. And um, when we're in our full functionality, we're going to transcend the, this form of physicality. So the, the need for the, the codons and the need for the amino acids are going to be transcended as well. We are going to be basically universal light, in its full expression. So we can manifest in and out of anything we want, go anywhere in the universe, do whatever we want in the universe, but we're also going to go outside of this universe. I'm talking about the, the main universe now. And we're going to start creating our own universe via the expression of light because we will have completed our journey and, for want of a better term, we will have mastered it. And we are now, uh, um, we are now capable of creating our own universe. And... Um, that's, that's really why we entered this universe to begin with. It was to learn everything about it so then we can start creating our own universe. And thus far we've co-created along the way, but uh, very soon there are those who are going to stay with Mother Earth and birth through the womb of the mother that are going to achieve the intended outcome. We are completing our universal journey. And, uh, you know, there are others who didn't enter the universe at the same time as us, so they're not completing their journey. But, they're, mm. uh, you know, there'll be those 
amongst that group who will be very jealous of what we've done. It's kind of it's weird because it's kind of like um, uh, you've got a first year uh, student in university or second year or third year or fourth year who's absolutely jealous of the fifth year or sixth year university student who's graduating. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, totally jealous and, and angry and resentful towards them for graduating. But, mm-hmm. you know, they didn't, we didn't all enter this universe at the same time. So why, why should those other students be behaving that way? It's weird, you know? And, um, yeah. and that's what the sick and twisted programs do to people who are journeying through this, this universe because it's a universe of contrasting expressions. So they do end up, um, not functioning, um, politely from the heart, but rather, um, with resent from the egoic, uh, from the mind-based ego systems. Mm, all right. Very well said. And, and one, I guess one more quick question. What can we do to reconnect with our eternal essence during this process, during this change? Yeah, it's quite simple. You, you just do a little, little meditation, bring your own light out from within you, from deep in your core. I, I see it in the middle of the chest area. And say, my light is strong and it's worthy, and Mother Earth is our reality. Mm. All right. I love that. George, I'm so sorry we're out of time.